you're running around a track. Two laps to be precise. The first lap, take it as slow as you like. The question is, how fast do you have to run during the second lap so that your total overall average speed is equal to twice the speed of your first lap? Admittedly, when I first heard this question, I thought, no problem. Let's just average the two speeds. I'll call them V1 and V2 for velocity of the first lap and velocity of the second lap. We just add these and divide by two to take their average. And this should equal twice V1, twice the speed of the first lap. A little bit of algebraic manipulation. V1 plus V2 should be 4V1. And V2 should be 3V1. Or in other words, we should run our second lap three times faster than the first lap to satisfy our conditions. Except this thinking is wrong. Performing the calculations this way assumes that the velocities, the speeds, are equally weighted. If we're computing our total average speed of two laps, and the second lap goes faster than the first, well, the second lap is going to take less time than the first. So our average speed isn't v1 plus v2 over 2, it's the total distance of two laps divided by the total time for two laps. So we should really think of it like this. Speed is distance divided by time. Let's let d be the distance around the track. Let's let t1 be the time it takes to complete the first lap. And let's let t2 be the time it takes to complete the second lap. So what's really our average speed? Speed is distance divided by time. How far did we travel in two laps? Well, each lap was a distance of d, so we traveled 2d. How long did it take us to travel 2d? Well, the first lap was t1, the second lap was t2, and so our total time was t1 plus t2. What's this supposed to equal? Twice the speed of the first lap. What's the speed of the first lap? d over t1. And now we have an interesting thing happening algebraically. We can cancel 2d on both sides, meaning that the distance around the track doesn't matter. That's nice. And we can try solving for t2. If we try to shuffle things around to solve for this relationship, we're going to see that t1 canceling on both sides as well and get that t2 is 0. Or in other words, to satisfy the constraint of this question, we would need to complete the second lap in zero seconds. We need to run infinitely fast to answer this question. If you really like simple questions like this with interesting answers, click the video on the screen. I promise you're going to find this one interesting as well. I'll see you in that one.